for it. And we got a million pull requests from uh, Snick, who's mad about our Docker containers. Upgrade Ubuntu. What is this? Oh, yeah. Funny. All right. Oh, well, great. Really? That's a really obscure... This is a really obscure tag to upgrade to. Okay, then. Um, 140 checks. What is going on? I keep seeing this where it seems to be duplicating everything. Um, all right. So let's just jump right in. Um, so who wants to go first? Who's who's up and who has uh, an agenda item? Uh, we can't see your screen. Okay. Um, Let's see. So, Hashim, what what do you got going on today? I know I still haven't gotten to your confidence PR, but I'm. This is today is my proposal review and, and PR cleanup day. So, yeah, no worries. Uh, I am uh, working on that same example that I was working on. Uh, okay. Uh, that moving the models. Mm -hmm. uh, I started uh, downloading another data set to, uh, uh, you know, make it. Uh, more real. Which is we uh, uh, moving between models. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I have uh, some uh, confusions. I might be right about the things, but I wanted to be sure okay, uh, about how we want to uh, test the uh, examples. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, was there anything else? I uh, know that's it. All right, great. Um, okay, so uh, Sahil, did you want to talk about Lenten commit messages again? I think we didn't. Mm, yes, yes. Okay. I, I have a basic uh, implementation ready. In a great. Oh, I thought I saw something. Great. Um, and uh, one else? another issue that uh, docs.sh port, it is ready with test oh, and stuff. So just, just want to discuss it once. Awesome. Very awesome. short discussion. All right. So, and then Shaw. Uh, again, uh, the data frame pair is ready for review, and uh, I'm modified. There was some issue with Git, so I thought we could have a good uh, look at that. And oh, great. Oh, yeah. Oh, so you, for... you fix, we fixed the branch issues, right? Yeah. Yeah. It looks like yeah. it's all good now. Great. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so this looks like it needs to be configurable here. Um, target name. Okay. Da, da, da. Okay. Pins data frame. All right, so didn't we talk about how we were going to only look at the predictions, right? Remember, um, we talked about uh, only asking for which um, columns are prediction data in the config structure um right assume everything else is feature was there uh did is this just you you haven't done that yet or uh, was there some reason it's it's basically the same thing right so uh suppose in this example suppose b and c were the uh prediction uh prediction columns so mm -hmm. you would just put b and c in the prediction columns again that's it I don't understand really what you just said. So we in this example, we have three columns, right? A, yeah. B, and C. Yeah. And it took C as the prediction column. OK. So our issue was with multiple uh, prediction columns. And we thought that it'd be better to keep a separate config parameter so that it'd be easier for the user to supply uh, prediction columns in case there's more than one, right? Mm -hmm. So in this example, if there if b and c were the prediction columns instead of just c you'd put the prediction calls parameter as b and c 
that's it. Okay, so why do we need feature columns then? Feature call. Uh, this is. I thought that we could uh, because we need to fetch the prediction for the record, right? And mm -hmm. That's slightly different as compared to the way the features are fetched. Okay, let's see. Oops. So. So feature calls, record feature, feature calls. All right, so why can't, so update. So the data frame. Okay, so, so the data frame here Basically, all right. So, so let's remove let's remove this feature columns thing and just iterate over the keys of record what record dot feature returns, or either let's see. So we're this really wraps an existing data frame source, yeah. So we don't really need to worry too much. We're we're really going to look at basically what columns already exist. So, so why don't we go through and we grab record dot features without passing at anything so we grab all of them right um so feature data equals record dot features right um and then let's only let's just go through the data that's there so key value in feature data actually we can just do this Record features, and then you can basically say, you know, you can say if the um, If the key is present in the data in the in the in the columns, right? Uh, or you could just check the columns. Yeah, maybe just check the columns first. So you could do the same thing. Only yeah, because this will be less. Um, this gives you slightly better performance. Um, okay. So you, if you do the same thing that you have here, only grab the feature columns. So feature columns, you can grab this from grab the feature columns from the or the feature columns are the columns of the data frame um, without the given the um, prediction columns from the config structure. Does that make sense? Right, because you already uh, have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so if yeah. We, you, you basically have that information, right? And so that way we can just get rid of this feature calls thing. Let's also, um, so let's also rename this um, let's rename this to predictions um, and that way um, and then we'll get rid of this um, okay great um, and then that way you know we don't have a calls because we don't really it's just the predictions um, Da, 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 da. Okay, so then this will change. It'll just be predictions and then C. And so, yeah, this basically changes to right. Um, and then I think the rest of this, yeah, okay, so this is the same thing. And then, yeah. 
Okay, I'll just add that comment. Okay, so let's let's update it to reflect this. Um, and let's see, let's look at record two. Okay, let's look at the tests. Um, so one, two. Okay, let's see. Okay, async with source. Okay, let's just dump, just let's get rid of this whole thing and just use save and load. Let's stick to using save and load um, since that creates less code. Um, and then let's also check that the changes. Let's also have a check update. Okay, now this is not where I want to put this. Also have a check for length of uh, records being what we expect. And that changes to record one are reflected. All right, any questions on any of this? Uh, no. Okay, and if you've got, great. And if you've got three records here, let's see. So this would be actually record one, record two. Okay, and it looks like, okay, yeah, I guess what, that would be record. Yeah, because I think what you're gonna end up with here is this source save. Just make sure that you check everywhere you have, right? Everywhere you have three records, right? So if you have three records here, check content. So if you assert that len is three, make sure you have three assert dict equals. That way, you know, we're, we're we know exactly what's going on. Um, we're 100% we're sure. All right, great. Great. Looking good. All right. Uh, whatever. Okay, you have the comments. Um, uh, is there anything else on your end? Uh, no. All right, great. And like I said, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to do basically a bunch of PR review and, and proposal review tonight. Um, all right, so Docsis, let's see. Uh, linting of commit messages. Let's take a look at that one. All right, da, da, da. Basic command for checking commit messages. Great. Force commit message check. Execute from request. I think this, all right, let's see. Execute fun close for fun and fun close param. Funk. Oh, this executes a bunch of functions on the same parameter. Okay. Mutation. Final mutations. No mutation. Mutation. Factor. All extensions, prefix mutations. All right, all right. commit message. All right. Then commits. Great. All right, okay. Uh, one thing here if we uh, let's just make sure. Let's make sure we keep this the same, only lower case. Uh, since this is this could get confusing, um, since we basically have a slightly different link commits and then commit lit commit lint. Um, yes, yes. That would get confusing. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, commit lint error. Great. Uh, it's not valid. 
if right here. So, uh, so we're just printing those commits which you need to change. Yeah, great. Okay, so get relevant commits is. Uh, so basically, shall I shall I walk you through these? Yeah, commits? please do. Yes. So what we are doing is we are getting relevant commits from relevant commits. I actually mean the commits that are on the current branch and that are not already in the master branch. Right. So that's what this function does. It would get all those uh, commits. Then uh, we would just validate them. So the validation procedure is like uh, we create different mutations of the uh, path extracted from the commit. Right. So as I said, like we would be splitting on the colons and would be uh, joining all the uh, parts of the commit until except the last part, which is the commit message. Uh -huh. This is the main commit message. So using that, what we would do that uh, that we will uh, perform different mutations on that string uh, uh -huh. after making it a path, and uh, then we will try to see that if any of those paths exist. And uh, uh, right. So these these mutations are in form of pipelines. That's why I that uh, function yeah, that you were great. looking at above. So, so uh, one after one, it just uh, it would execute those mutations. There are, so I take a product of the mutations. Mm -hmm. So suffixes, suffixes, so like we can ex extend it also. Currently, I have certain suffixes, suffixes and prefixes mm -hmm. and those type of mutations. And uh, uh, in the at the end, like we are adding various uh, extensions so that we can like uh, test if the, the file name is only given and not the extension is given in the extension is not given in the commit message so we can mm. uh, figure it out yeah and we do well we also I, don't want extensions and commit messages um yes so so yeah. that would solve the problem and uh, i did run it on a few command a uh, few commits so i'm just pasting the outputs on uh, the chat great uh, like and... the, the paste pin link Okay, let's see. All right, let's definitely. Okay, so why don't why don't we write some tests for this? I think this looks like a great, great, great approach here. Um, so let's. Why don't we write some tests? Uh, okay, yeah. Da, da, da. Okay, let me just do this. Um, I re noticed recently that resolving these is helpful in case there is some sort of you know not running it from the same directory get ls3 i had only command one okay, does, it, does it really make a difference in that case uh well okay so if you are not for example if you run this from if you okay so let's see path file dot resolve so if you Actually, I ran, tried it running from various paths, but it did was you run like it from in service? Yes, yes. You ran it it from is actually dunder dunder file is relative to the package, right? Yeah, some I can't remember what happened. Okay, maybe maybe it doesn't matter then. Yeah, I happened. This happened to me one time where I ran, I think it was maybe because I was running a test, and so I started getting paranoid and adding that places. Um, but if you ran it from service and it worked, then whatever. Um, let's see, command. Okay, let's just make this not command one since there's no command two. Um, great. Um, extension set. Da, 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 great. great. Let's see, let's make sure that we pass the out in case we captured something and it erred and it didn't print it to standard error because sometimes that happens. Uh, get command output. You know, this is one that we might want to, let's see, we might want to abstract or we might want to put this in dfml slash util. Um, since things like this happen a lot. All right. Um, 
Okay, mutation. Da, da, da. Okay, yeah, let's so okay, and then you have a paste pen link. Oh yeah, and I see you're running into an issue on Arch. Yeah. Um let's see, we probably just need some more uh, you probably need to this arch thing, I would say um so what is it? Uh, user is user lit. What is it? Um, yeah. Okay. All right. User lib. Uh, what is that freaking file? Um, let's, let's see. Oh, it's release. Yeah. User lib. Yeah, OS release. I think I would say source user lib OS release. Modify modify that modify that script source OS release, and then you'll know what distro you're on, and you can choose commands appropriately. For example, the apt add key, or just using something with using Pacman or something, right? Um, okay, great. Uh, da -da. Does that make sense? Uh, no, actually, I didn't. Get okay, so. Let's see. So, this is short aside. Um, okay, so. Um, uh, what was it that you were running, cat um, docs contributing? Testing. Where is that running CI test locally? Point. Yeah, I think this is forked because of depths. It's this is annoying. Yeah, the problem is that if you run that stuff, then it doesn't it gets mad because it's like I can't install. Let's see. Dot. Okay. It can't run the, the it can't run the sudo when you're in a container and you're running the container as a regular user is the problem. So I think where is that dot ci Docker? This is something we've been needing to fix for a while. So let's see, does source steps export user equals user? Um, Okay, yeah, because I think we run it as that user instead of doing the change user stuff. Eh, maybe that needs to change then. Um, okay, so where is that? Where do we have that? Um, there's basically, okay, so the pattern that this follows is... Um, so what we did here is we run the Docker container as the user and group so that we preserve permissions on all the files uh, because we're going to mount in this source directory just in case things change, like for the docs build. Um, and then you don't end up with all your files as root. So the way that we should probably solve it, okay, well, now let's look at this more closely here because these guys are both going to end up in a different plugin if we split them out. So maybe we don't need to worry too much about this now. Um, uh let's see what what is is there is there let's see uh, actually my complete objective was to like you know just test some ci test locally because yeah uh, while pushing it it takes too it, too much of time on yeah it time. takes a while yeah um okay and what is your okay so you okay, but your changes though are localized enough that you could just run just the tests, right? Yes. You know, yeah. So, so I think I think. Do you have any change sets that affect across multiple? Let's see. Okay, you don't have any change sets that affect across multiple plugins. So I would recommend sticking with this and I and Yash is currently working out that second party plugin stuff. So hopefully we will split it out and then unless you are on one of those um, plugins, which I doubt you will be on, you won't have to deal with this. Um, okay. 
so yeah i would just stick to, to testing it okay um you know using the regular unit test command all right so auto ml at project ID. okay so this is your current list of things that validate and don't validate great um yes yes fantastic all right so service to pin tab pin dips. all right so why don't we make a test case against this and so yeah we'll make a test case against this and then any ones that fail group them okay let's see So make a test case against um, any, any failing, so false, um, commit messages uh, group by plausible reason for failure. Um, and then so basically what you're going to do here is you're going to go through you're going to make this a test case right and then group any ones that are failing you know throw all the failing ones into into one test case and then start splitting them out into different test cases based on why you think they're failing and then start fixing the cases right on on why they're failing and if you can't figure out you know what the the rhyme or reason like what why why it's uh, uh, mostly mostly the ones that are fa here failing are mostly because uh, there is something uh, listed at the end of the path which is not a file or a directory mm -hmm. and it can be safely ignored using uh, underscore at the end of that thing underscore what do you mean like if you're you so you added a rule to say if there's an underscore then ignore yes yes that okay yeah let's not i don't think we have that so so the goal is to basically reproduce what we have right only using automated validation so and if we haven't used that underscore anywhere so far so we don't we want to avoid that if possible so let's take a look at a couple of these and understand you know what 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 led us to the situation where it's not validating um, because we may find you know this is what i'm saying so we'll dump all these in a file group them by why we think they're not validating, right? And then we'll go through and enumerate which ones don't validate um, based off of, let's see, test doc strings. So test doc strings, okay, so this is one where things like this with tests, right? If we group all the ones that are failing validation for tests together, we would probably find that, okay, we need this new rule to say, okay, all the test things, right? So doc strings, this would, this would lead us to have a test case where all of these false ones are grouped so do you see what i'm saying here right where you imagine yourself creating a test case where you dump all this stuff in a file right and then everything that's true right now just you know make sure that it ends up as a search true with the validation right and then run it through the validation function make sure that you know self dot assert true whatever this is right so so we are just talking about writing a test for test dev as in in that right Yes, exactly. Right. You're writing the test case for the thing you just implemented. Right. So you just have an array. You have one giant array of all of these things. Right. And then for each in the array, you assert true that the validation passes. Right. That the validation function itself passes. And now for any ones that don't assert true. Right. All this list here that doesn't assert true. Move those to a new array. Right. In a new test case. Right. And now you're going to look at those and you're going to and you're going to look at all of these ones that assert false. Right. So let me just sort of I might just just sort of show you what I'm talking about here. Um, Vim tests service test dev. Right. Uh, class test commit lint. All right. All right. So all of these things. 
Okay, so anything that's false, basically. Um, okay, uh, blah, 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 blah. All right, so this is, all right, I'm just going to take a small subset here. So imagine we're working with this subset. Um, so I'm going to move any ones that are false into their own little area, right? And then I'm going to move any ones that are true, and I'm going to leave these ones, you know, here. And I'm going to have this test case that basically says um, equals this array for commit message in. Oh, God, now my tabs and spaces. Self.assert true, um, you know, commit lint dot validate commit. I don't know what the function name is, but you know what I mean, right? Um, commit message. Yes. Right. And so now, now we know, now we know these all pass, right? And so now we go through and we start writing our set no pace. Now we go through and we start writing our next test case, right? Which is basically, okay, so test, test, okay, test, validate, test, validate, pass, and test, validate, special, and I can't spell special, case, tests. Right, and now we're starting, okay, so now we looked at these and we're like, all right, these are probably, you know, these are probably related in why they aren't working, you know, um, because they both have test CI and they're both doing false, right? So we're going to say, all right, let's, we're going to group these into their own test case, right? And and then we're going to try to make them pass, right? And we're going to, we're going to modify, modify the code until they pass, right? Um, and my guess is what you're going to find is that the rule here, oops. The rule here that you're seeing test CI. Really? Come on now. No. Test CI. The rule here that you're seeing is that when we change test case files, all test files start with the prefix test underscore, right? So you're going to need some kind of rule that, that has this, that makes sure that, you know, when you see a file that is prefixed with test underscore, that your validation really treats it as if it wasn't prefixed with test underscore at all, right? And then once you fix that in your main code, like the main code, the, the validation code, then these you're going to see this this group of test case starts to pass, right? And then you go through and you do this, you know, so sort of for each group of things that look alike, right? And this this one is going to be also in there, right? So this guy, you can see that that this one's sort of a nested case. So maybe maybe this ends up in the same validation group that when you make when you make when you when you change this validation to make these guys pass then this guy might pass as well right and then this guy is probably the case of where you know we have a function here um so test validate um special case function um and in this case you know we had a function that we referenced within the file right and that's probably why um that's probably why the validation failed because we were looking at at the file. Um, we were looking at at, at the um, we were looking at the file name, right? And and we looked, we validated util, we validated net, we saw cache download, and we're like, wait a minute, that's not a file, right? So we could say, hey, if this thing ends in a paren paren, then we know that somebody's referencing a function within the file. You could add more validation to go look in the file, but I don't think we really need to go that far, right? But you could basically say, all right, if I'm referencing a file and then all of a sudden this is, you know, if, the, if this is a file, the valid, validation passed for that file, and now we're looking in and, and we look for the next file, and it has, if, we, if we're about to look for the next file, but we see it's paren paren, then we know that we're referencing a function within the file and we pass the validation on that, that, that segment. Does that make sense? 
Yes, but but wouldn't we be adding a lot of rules in that case, like a lot of rules? Well, okay, to, so to, let's to see. make every, everything which is uh, already there work because. All right, so uh, so let's see. Yeah, I guess okay. Maybe we don't need to worry about that. Um, maybe we don't need to worry because, about the because because we are limiting only only new commits, not the so, so there's yeah 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 uniformity in the future. Not uh, we are not validating the past. This is true because if we go to validate the past, there are like thousands of commits. Right? Yeah, this is true, right? Um, yeah, there are thousands of commits. That's a very good point here. I was looking at this list and being like, oh, this is all of them, forgetting that there are thousands. Okay, yes. Um, so maybe we need to. Uh, Let's see. You tell Nat change like we can we can make a provision for functions that as a thing. Yeah, I think I think and then and then you know and then what I'm saying is basically no no all I'm saying is is know which ones should pass group it uh, you we need to go a little bit farther is what I'm saying, right? Um and so in our in our quest to go a little bit farther this is how I recommend approaching it, right? So I recommend approaching it in take your sample here and throw them, throw them in this, in this ones that already pass. And then you see what I'm saying. This is just sort of how I recommend you approach uh, fixing the other cases so far, right? Yes. yes. Okay. So, so some broad cases can be fixed, but some broad cases can be fixed. So still, we will have some comments. Which yeah, we like, we will have valid. ones that don't validate, right? And and I guess the the important thing here is is that we would then, you know, if we're following this this um, if we take this as a sample size, right? This would be, you know, test validation doesn't pass, right? Test validation doesn't does not pass and then you just have a you know assert false right and so we at least now know which ones shouldn't pass right so we we know if you're looking at this as your sample side we've essentially triaged this list into uh you know which ones will pass validations and which ones won't right and then that that lets us know in the future going forward like what what we expected when we wrote the validation, right? Um, because, you know, maybe years down the line, we're going to be like, well, why doesn't that validate, right? And we can say, all right, well, we put it in the test case that says this does not pass validation, right? Um, you see what I'm saying? Yes, does, yes, does that make sense why we would do that? Yes, yes, okay. I get it. Cool, So, So Great. some, some broad things are like adding the function support and... Uh, are we are we avoiding that uh, uh, skip this thing sort of part like uh you know this from the... skip what do you mean skip skip means like adding a special identifier like an uh, underscore or something yeah let's something let's else. avoid let's avoid that um functionality so because then I'm sh the thing is as soon as you add that functionality it, it ends up getting abused um so so not not having the ability to to skip making sure that it, it you know this this is great right this is all this is all stuff that this is the way we want it stuff to look right this is also the way we want stuff to look we could i I don't think it really matters too much. I think that we can basically throw this, you know, the function thing in the validation doesn't pass, right? And we can just say, you know, this commit message going forward could have been, you know, change logging message mechanism for cache download to log only on 1% change, right? It's not important that we that we have the function level, right? What is important is that we have the regular source tree, the tests, and the um, unique identifiers like you release um, CI, uh, well, CI I think falls into the regular regular bit, right? Um, but there's a dot there, so that's sort of a bit of a special no, case. That right? that case is handled. The dot cases are handled. Okay, great. You so you see you 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 see you see I think the the important cases, right? And and so that's basically what we're enumerating, right? Um, is what do we really care about? Everything else we'll throw out, right? Um, I think so, I think you're so on a very I good think, path. So what I think is for uh, for starters, we can like 
implement some stuff and as we go along we can keep improving this part right exactly right and and if we find cases that this is the, the writing the test sort of in this way allows us to if somebody adds a commit message that makes a lot of sense then we'll be able to go and and, and modify it in a sane you know we'll have a, a way to modify it right Yes, we would be able to uh, like get more important cases by failing that CI. Exactly. Sometime. Exactly. Yeah. Great. Great. This is a great start. Great work. All right. So yeah, let's add tests and then we'll re-review. So uh, let's add tests. Um, work to fix um, uh, test case and add support for unique cases release Sarah um, then we'll re-review re-review okay that's why that's such a weird word I'm like what's going on here all right um okay and then the docs sh port so um okay so test coverage was fixed everything was fixed it's everything fine looks good all right let's see da, 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 da. this is very helpful when you put the things in here this is extremely helpful um file not found cannot add child handler watcher doesn't have a loop attached i don't got this shit all right, let's see. Let's look at what happened here. Um, that, that actually was solved later on when I patched async IO with mock. Mm -hmm. uh, async IO exec command when uh, I patched that uh -huh. and that network. But I don't really know what, what, what was happening. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, so it would be really great if you can some, throw some light on that. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, Okay, great. You're doing the console scripts grab. Awesome. Exec command. Yeah, right. So, and this is the thing. It's like we just end up with this sort of thing everywhere. So, we should probably just have a function for that. Um, I will I will open an issue for that, like executing great. command, great. getting output and stuff. And, like, great. and I'll even execute that. Great. That sounds great. Uh, so punctuals partial directory no jekyll great great copy button okay images set iterator okay shu tilt copy wonderful wonderful okay nice very nice Service docs, great. Okay, let's just make sure everything's still there. Make sure it's not none. Default none. Okay. Okay, I think that this should be um, this should be a bool value here. Um, because this is just a flag, so default false. Um, and then we don't need periods here. Okay. Target dir. I think we don't need dir here because that's sort of just a. Um, this doesn't make it really that much more specific. Um, let's see, targeter, targeter. Okay. We just end up with another hyphen on the command line, you know, or an underscore hyphen once we fix it. And that's just uh, more for people to type and more for people to forget what the command is. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, der. Pages pass. Okay, der. All right, so is this... Okay, so. so what what actually happens is when we uh, patch async IO with uh, uh, that async IO exec command with uh, 
uh, false uh, mm -hmm. with a fake thing. So what happens is uh, Sphinx build doesn't create a new folder. And when we are coming out of the with temporary directory uh, mm -hmm. context manager, it wants to delete that temporary directory, which has already been removed and not uh, recreated by Sphinx build because it is not being called. So uh, yeah. it ended up being like an error that this directory was not found. OK, so can let's see. So, okay, so you RM'd her first. Okay, great. Okay, I was just gonna say, uh, and let's see, we, by convention, we don't have any other comments that say needed for, like, we don't have any comments that are on the same line like this. Um, so let's, uh, we'll just, for consistency's sake, move that. Okay, so usually we always put them on the line above. Um, okay, so SH util RM tree pages path. So you remove pages path and then you make dir. Uh, we probably don't need to do parents is true. So that's really fine. Um, yeah. Okay. And I see what you're saying. So um, let's see. So do we rem did we remove it? Yeah, we did remove it here. So uh, yeah, we had been removing it. Yeah, I am our pages. So um, let's take a look at your tests. So let's check. Wonderful. This is great. Um, let's try image. Okay. okay, exec. Target dirt. So we just need to change this one. Target. Da, da, da. command sequence okay so the test files test command sequence is there a reason that you had added the is develop is that something that we had before in the other test cases yes actually what was happening because uh, if it was not installed in develop mode these commands were not available in some tests were failing in ci tests were failing in ci if it wasn't installed in development mode yes And also other test cases did this, so I just thought it would be. Yeah, nice interesting. Idea. I'm wondering. I can't remember what the original. It's probably some sort of underlying problem that we need to solve. That's why I'm wondering what's going on there. Um, okay. Yeah. Let's just that way we just make this slightly, slightly less stuff. Okay. So Sphinxville W temperature docs docs API. Is this going to fail on Windows due to those? Or oh no, it won't because you did the. Okay, you you added the, or it's using that MK exec, which will format it this way. Um, all right, okay, let's see. So then the only thing is that we end up with. Uh, okay, this it doesn't get tested here. So TCP server served forever. Let's see. Okay, let's just mock out. Let's have one more. Let's see. I think, let's see. Okay. IO, string IO. Uh, Standard out value strip, get redirect output. Okay, let's move this. Let's move, okay, so this is the thing where when we do, when we grab, let's see, where did that go? This one, you're not grabbing it. So when we grab standard out, um, it's good, well, okay, this is mainly when we grab standard error, it's a problem, but it's good to, to, to keep the things within the redirect standard out body as, as, as light as possible. Um, and also, since we have this here, we should probably just be putting this all on the same line instead of within two width blocks, since we're chaining widths in, in, in any ways, right? We're already chaining width statements, so let's just continue chaining. Let's either do them all as separate indents or, or do them all as one, right? Um, so so the point, the point being, keep as little 
there's few things within a within a um, within a block that redirects standard out or standard error is possible because if people go in here and start um, modifying things, they might be wondering, you know, why am I not getting standard error or standard out? Um, so let's just de-indent this. Um, so let's move this assert where we grab or we want to keep as few things in redirect blocks as possible uh, just in case future people modify uh, within the block and wonder why they aren't getting output. All right, great. This looks great. Um, da, 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 da. So, so that check should be moved out of that block, right? Yeah, just basically what what I'm saying here is, and this is a mess to look at, unfortunately, but what I'm saying here is that if we end up with, oh, let's just say it's in here. It's going to do this to us, but whatever. Say we have something like this, right? Um, so if we do this instead, now if I, you know, random other person who's writing a test case come along and start adding print cases in here, I'm not going to get output. Um, and this is just, this is, you know, functionally it's the same thing, but, but, but as we maintain a large code base that, that many people work on, it, it helps to be mindful of, of people in the future. Um, so uh, we just try to keep as few things inside these, these blocks that might redirect output as possible, like only the exact thing that you wish to capture. And that way, you know, all other code gets added outside the block because if for some reason someday we went and did, you know, standard error and I did my assert in here, now I'm not going to get any output. Um, I, yes, I, I, yeah. I yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just, it's this is, uh, you know, m more of a, uh, I'm not even sure what you would call this kind of change, Good but question. yeah, yeah. Um, great. All right. So let's see. Um, uh, I think, yeah, other than that, this looks great. Um, nice, great work. Um, and then we, we have that that note there um, about wanting to. Okay, so this was is a command. All right, yeah, we really need some kind of, I think we'll, we'll probably want, I think in, in feature git, we had something like this. We're probably going to want a new, uh, don't we have, let's see, where is that? Um, let's see. Them diff mal util. Do we have an OS or something? I think we have an OS in here. OS ch dir. Yeah, OS might be the right place to put these um commands or maybe async helper. Probably OS. This is OS um stuff. Um. So if if whenever you end up doing that, because I think you said you were you were going to, to do that eventually, so OS is probably the right place to put that. Um, and let's just say probably in diff mal slash till slash OS wy or a uh, more specifically named file. Um, great. Uh, all right, great. Any any um, questions on that feedback? No. All right, Talk awesome. Later. Looking great, looking great. All right, so let's see. What else do we have? Anything else you wanted to talk about today? No, nothing else. That's all right, fine. great. All right, so let's check out this moving between notebooks. Man, this snick really flooded with... Groovy for a specific date. That is a really odd choice. Um, okay. 
So, where did that go? There. Uh, I didn't push it uh, yet. Any okay. changes to it? Uh, you just wanted to sort of my... talk about it? Yeah. 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 That sounds I good. I just wanted to be sure about uh, what I know about it. Can you see my screen? Uh, not quite. Yes. Yes. Now I can. All right. Uh, so uh, I was uh, uh, confused about how uh, data sets uh, work around uh, the tests. I mean, how tests deal with uh, downloading the data sets. Mm -hmm. Like I was uh, going through this example of uh, testing the example of uh, DEF, DNNC, and uh, this is a very uh, old see. example, so this is probably maybe not the not the best one, but yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, as far as I understood, it's still downloading the data set, right? Every mm -hmm. time the test runs? Yep. Yeah. So, and this is not uh, ideal, right? So I think you, you were on the right track with the cache download. Uh, with the what? With your cache download call. You're on the right track there. Yeah, all right. So uh, uh, how do we want to run the test, basically? This is the example itself. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, how do we mock uh, the test uh, with the data set? Do, you, do we uh, take a shorter data set and mock it with it? Do we keep it in the files, or do we? Uh, uh, that, right? Yeah, I see. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, how do we want to handle this? Um, so. Um, Let's see. So yeah, so you're you're going to end up with um, okay. So you you have that right. You you've written this to 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 right. Okay, you've written your load data set call. Um, you've written and you're doing cache download. Um, uh, and the function uh, it doesn't seem to handle this uh, semicolon separated file quite well. Uh, I think I that's that's that we need yeah. to that's a CSV source issue, so CSV source needs to be modified to understand that it should be. Okay, let's take a look at that file. So machine learning wine quality red, wine quality red. Uh, you want me to open the file? Ah, uh, that's okay. I think I found it. Um, okay. This is an interestingly formatted file. Okay, so yeah, all right, semicolon limited. So this is a new issue that we need to open, I believe. So I'm trim all taking just taking notes here. So um, CSV source needs to support um, non comma delimited. Eliminators, eliminators. I can't remember what. Um, let's see. Let's look at the CSV source, or let's look at the CSV module. So the CSV module says that um, the uh, delimiter. Okay, so you we need to, and let's see. Wonder if the CSV sorts. Um, oops. So the delimiter is 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 right the the whatever is separating the, the values so if if we look at dfml source csv uh, okay. screen yeah yeah okay um let's see so if we looked at dfml source come on so if we looked at dfml source csv we would find that so yeah the dict reader is what we're looking at and the dialect. So if we look at the the, um, the docs here, we see that there's an optional. Let's see, where's dict reader? I believe dict reader should be pretty much the same thing. Yes, this thing is going to have the same. KWR should get passed to reader. Yeah, we're passed to reader, and reader takes delimiter. So we need to add a config parameter. Um, this is a very, very easy change, um, 
but it's basically just, you know, we need to have this be something that gets taken from the config, right? So delimiter yeah. equals self.config.delimiter, or parent, or whatever. Yeah, self.config. Uh, yeah, so this is a separate issue. I mean, and then you just need to instantiate a CSV source in your pass to load, your call to load. Um, so, um, star equals comma. Um, and now you can, now you'll be able to override this, right? Um, so, and then you, in your call to load, you just pass a CSV source and, and you set the delimiter to be a, to be a, um, you know, a semicolon. And I think that will fix your issue there. All right. Um, uh, regarding the downloading data set. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, downloading the data set. Um, uh, yeah, how, how do we deal with, with it uh, in the tests? How do we deal with the tests? Okay, so test examples uh, with regards to downloading data sets. Uh, okay, so I mean, the context of your test, so it depends, I mean, so you'll write your test case, right, and it'll it'll probably use, oh, this is an interesting thing now, because it's going to use paper mill. Um, no, yeah, okay, so you'll write your uh, test. Actually, um, uh, I'm not using paper mill, because paper mill is more about uh, automating and uh, scheduling notebooks. Uh, they have another module. Uh, the same organization has another module uh, called the test book, and it lets you, uh, uh, you know, run specific cells and run tests on it. Uh, okay. Um. It spells interact test with an N. Enter. N T E. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, great. Thanks. All right. Paper mail. Test book. Test book. Execute true. All right, let's see. Okay, so just want to get an idea of what this might look like. I mean, I think mocking request library. Okay, test book, get test details, get a reference to a function. Okay, where does this, okay, so get details, get content. And then patch request get get details equals get details, and then you call the function. Okay, so now I see what you're saying about like having that stuff in in. Okay, so this is execute cell. Okay, so okay, so this is how you would execute the cell. Okay, and that that way you don't need the functions. Yes. Okay, I see. Uh, you can okay. even uh, execute uh, specific cells uh, in the test that you want. Nice. Uh, like multiple cells and. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So this is great. Yeah. Um, what do we want to do about? It? Well, I think. Okay. So I think that the cache download calls specify the cache download calls. Um, they they give the file path, right? And so I think what you'll end up with is you'll end up with wanting to provide a use unit test dot mock with cache download to where is a good example i thought i had an example of something like this um where did that go um where was that was it this was it cache download um there was something, maybe not. Hmm, can't remember. Um, basically, oh yeah, it's something like this. We're basically grab the old function, and then so so this is sort of similar where 
wanted to mock the inspect params call. Um, and so, you know, grab the old reference, created a new function, unit test mock, and then basically here's the new function. And the new function actually calls the old function. So what I'd recommend here is doing a similar sort of pattern to this where you're mocking your your what you're mocking is cache download and then that second parameter right with the file path make sure that you basic basically that that takes a, a path lib dot path or a string or whatever right so if it if it was a string turn it into a path lib dot path now put the put the file data let's see where is put the let's see um now i can't could you could you show your um your file again real quick sure uh can you see it yes so so put the file data so so that data.csv right your your new version of the function will get that as as the second parameter um and you can now take that like and put make change the path so that it's in the test directory right um and somewhere in the test like test slash downloads i think some of them go to and that way in the ci we can cache any of the data sets so basically we can uh no this is going to be a mess um the because the, the trick here is how do you make sure that these data files don't end up all over the place when you're running these unit tests, right? Um, but yeah. you still are able to cache them, right? Um, start off start off with just implementing. I mean, obviously, start off with just implementing it. But when you get to this point, I think what you're going to want to do is this pattern of, you know, pattern of, of using unit test mock to take the second parameter, modify the path that it's pointing to, to make it under a specific directory in that's, that's in within the source tree, but also ignored, right? And and that way, as you run these tests locally, you won't be re-downloading these files. Does that make sense? Um, I am not, not really. Okay, so essentially, okay, so that data so say you were to write a test case that grabs this ipon i thought i python notebook right and it's in examples notebooks you know yeah. moving yeah so this is your test case that's just under tests right so it's test slash notebooks um dot py test notebooks dot py and it runs this notebook right and right. when it runs the notebook it's going to end up with a data.csv within whatever context that you know whatever the current working directory that the test ran in yeah. right yeah and and we have talked about several times how we would like everything to run in its own temporary directory but you know sometimes that doesn't happen um so if you use re the regular async test case class then or the regular unit test dot test case class wherever you triggered the test cases which is usually the root of the, the dffml right so if you ran from the root of your source tree you know your test command you're going to end up with data.csv in the root of your source tree does that make sense yeah yeah okay so now what we want though is if we have a bunch of these notebooks we're going to end up with a bunch of these files right and they're all going to end up in the root of our source tree when we run the test and then we're all going to have we're going to have them all to the git ignore right and that's going to be a pain right and it's going to be hard to maintain so what we'd like to do is we'd like to every time we see a cache download right we would like to mock it so that instead of the second, because the second parameter is where do I put the file once I download it, right? So what we want to do is is have this mocked version of cache download modify the second parameter before it passes it to the real version of cache download. And when it passes it to the real version, or the modification that it does is to change the path such that it goes under a ignored directory. Does that make sense? All right. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. I think, what your end goal here is going to be. And, and also... It may make sense for somebody to go modify, like to to. It may make sense um, to to do as a little sort of side quest here to go change cache download because there's really no reason it needs to be a um, 
a context manager, right? Like we talked about, and uh, and and yeah. So it, it may make sense to just to just go go modify that function, um, and and then that way you don't have to deal with the intricacies of you know the various usages because as you mock it, if if you mock it, you're gonna well you're gonna end up having to mock it as a context manager, which is going to be a slight pain. So it might make sense to just go 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 change all of them first. Um, but yeah. To uh, to just have a function. Yeah, yeah, that one issue that we created and, and we talked about basically cache download. There's no reason for it to be a decorator. Um, that was my bad. I don't know why I thought it should be a decorator. Um, oh, I remember why I thought it should be a decorator. Um, I thought it should be a decorator because when we were using this should I test, we wanted to make sure that we can cache all of the dependencies. So we put all the decorators into that should I or example should I test binaries. And then we hash that file to determine whether the cache changes in the GitHub Actions run. And so putting all the calls in that file and then you can actually decorate you put the function call in that file and you put the at in the file where you use it but we can just change those usages to basically we can just put the parameters to the function call in there and then call the function within the other file and that way we maintain the cache um if that makes sense um yeah yeah okay all right cool i can, great. I can start working on that great great sweet looking good yeah i think you know it looks like you, you you're on a roll here so all right um all right. anything else on your end hashim other than like i said i'm doing uh pr reviews and um and and proposal reviews today uh for those who got drafts in so um so uh yeah, i will get to the confidence pr uh, no, thank you. Yeah, it's all right. All right, great. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. So, uh, Sandia, um, I think we're we're. Did I get your name right? Uh, it's Sanidia. San Sanidia. Uh, yes. Sir. I have two queries. Uh, regarding uh, this, uh, first query was uh, like I have created an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, it was regarding the implementation of K fold techniques. Okay. Like uh, my idea was to uh, a K fold technique uh, will be a better way to compare the accuracy accuracy measures for uh, all the models. Yep. Uh, for example, we are uh, implementing if we are implementing the idea of auto ML, mm -hmm. so we need to compare the accuracies of uh, uh, on changing the hyperparameters. Mm -hmm. And uh, K fold technique will be a better way for measuring the accuracies. Yeah, I feel so. I created an issue, and I need to ask that: uh, Shall I implement it, and in which file should I begin? Yeah, with? like where where does that happen? Um, let's see. Um, hmm, that's a good question. Um, where does that belong? Um, I would say if you're going to do that, start with like if you're if you're taking this as a, as a piecemeal approach right and you start with okay let's just implement a k-fold technique first i would start as doing that as an example um and say you know sort of just write a python file under the examples folder right and then uh or actually better yet better yet write a test case um and just just put this in the test right and say let's see implementation of k-fold techniques this is how this is how sort of the recommended this is how i would recommend doing things is if you're going to start doing something write it as a test first and then move it into its own file so write everything within a test file so uh to start um write a test file say you know test slash model slash test kfold and then you know implement in the file implement as a function implement something right you know it doesn't have to be kfold as a function but but write your whole like basically write everything within a function and then call the function within a test case right and now you now you have the ability to move this function out to refactor it to do something else right but it's also getting tested within the ci it's getting run as a test case that's your your sort of mode of ex execution is is you just run the test right um implement whatever your whatever your thoughts are okay got it as a function. And, uh, I have 
Yeah, go for it. Uh, I have another query. Uh, like uh, uh, I was thinking to use that model dot load method for uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for loading various models, mm -hmm. which will be helpful for uh, that auto ML idea. So, uh, like it was mentioned that if we are uh, not passing any arguments in model dot load. So it will automatically load all the models, mm -hmm. but uh, on uh, using that, uh, only the my SLR model is being loaded and not the others. Okay, so you don't have the rest of them installed, is what that means. Um, so only uh, SLR is being loaded. Um, try DFML version. Uh, or and or dfml uh, service dev entry points points list dfml dot model um, to check which packages or plugins uh, and which models are installed um so have you run that can you do you have a terminal open right now uh, uh sorry can you repeat do you have a terminal open right now uh actually i'm on my phone uh, okay yeah i just thinking you know then we could we could check it out but if you uh i don't know if you can see the screen but if you can uh you know if you do the version command and i think there might be an example in the docs but it basically lists out every plugin that's installed it'll tell you what the version is it'll tell you where it's installed and then if it's in a git repo it'll tell you what the hash of the git repo is um, so this is how you can sort of confirm that you've installed things in a development mode and if you do the dfml so if you have the git repo checked out and you've installed have you gone through the contributing documentation for the um for the like have you gone through the contributing documentation for the setup yeah Okay. Yeah, I haven't gone through it. Okay, great. So then you'll need to basically, when it says uh, installing plugins in development mode, uh, you can you can run the DFML service dev install, um, and and that way you should end up with all of the plugins installed. Um, now that takes a fair amount of space because this is you know all the dependent libraries. I think it's like four four or five gigabytes. So be aware of that as well. Um, you may just want to install like just Scikit or something to, to, to give you like, you know, a, a little a little bit of, of, of models to work with and not install everything if you didn't want to do a giant download. So that that should, you could just, you could try just installing Scikit with like, um, let's see, where is that? So that dash E command that we do, um, let's see, yeah, where we do dash E, the pip install with dash E, and then the dot um, that installs the, you know, the, the main plugin in development mode. And then, oh yeah, and then right above the installing plugins in development mode, you'll see a, you know, an example of how to install just one plugin and it's model TensorFlow. You could switch that to model slash scikit, and then you would end up with, um, you would end up with just the scikit models installed, which there's a fair number of them, and you should see more things in your load command output. Um, but yeah, I think this is a good, 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 great way to start this. Um, all right. Um, actually, actually, I have another doubt. Like, I'm thinking uh, to create a function uh, mm -hmm. that will uh, compare the accuracies of different models. So that will take the input as hyperparameters or something like that. So that uh, for if if someone is implementing the idea of auto ML. Mm -hmm. So uh, that person can focus on the optimization techniques mm -hmm. and uh, he can take uh, the help of these functions as well. So what is this so function going to do again? Uh, it is going to uh, like uh, load the model dynamically and uh, compare the models with uh, different hyperparameters. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I think, I mean, I think this is a, a, a good path. I mean, you, so... So if I understand correctly, you have one function that I, I you have one function that does, you know, something like K fold, K fold or something like that. And then you have another function that essentially loads the models and and compares them, and compares them using the, 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 the first function. We talked about. Yeah. yeah, I think this is a, a very solid, you know, I think that's a solid, solid strategy there. Um, 
let's see and hey hey, hey john, john yeah uh, Uts Utsav is asking for you to admit him in this oops sorry my uh thanks let's see what happened it's not showing me that anybody wants in um that's... he's sending messages on Twitter actually let's see Oh, there we go. Great. All right. Hey, sorry, we didn't uh, didn't pop up and 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 tell me you wanted to be admitted. I don't know what it was going on there. All right. Okay. So let's see. So yeah, I think that's a sound strategy, um, and especially you know this this approach of of putting it all in one test file and writing the test case and then throwing it up as a pull request that allows you know the the. The, myself and the other mentors, Saksham and, and Yash, to to review it. It's a very easy review process then, then because we can see we don't have to replicate your environment. We can read the output in the logs, and we can see your code all in one place. And it's a really great way to to prototype things. Um, and I like this approach. Okay, got it. Okay, great. Yeah, um, yeah, that sounds great. Anything else on your end there? Uh, no, that's it. Thank All you. All right, cool. All right, and let's see. So I think we got. Let's see. Oh yeah, we didn't. Okay, so the meeting link, the meeting link is um, if you go to the um, if you go to the contact page, um, it is on the calendar here so and it's in the uh if you go to more details it's in the calendar so and i i think we should probably we should probably put that that meeting link in the in the contact page too as well i'm not sure why the other weekly sync doesn't show up on here but you know i guess we'll, we'll fix that um all right so okay who else do we have here Let's see, I think we got everyone, okay, except for who just joined, which was, um, I can't remember what your name was. Who was it that just joined? This isn't Sanjvan, is it? It's who? So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, I didn't get your name down last time. How how are you doing? What's going on with you? Yeah, I become familiar and read many things which we provided last time. All right, great. And I have also submitted a draft on mail, but All you right. didn't reply on the first or second, maybe. Yeah. So, so I submitted right now from GSOC. This is great. Yeah. So, so yeah, submitting, submitting, um, yeah, the, the mailing list, I'm not sure what's going on with the mailing list. I haven't seen an email there. Also my, my Gmail, it keeps telling me that it's full. So that may be very well what's going on there. Um, all right. So great. So we, I'm doing reviews this week. Um, and we're just at the end of our meeting right now, but I will get Hello. back to you. Yes. Hi, John. Nitesh. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I have made a PR, so I just want to discuss just five to ten minutes. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see which which. Oh, okay. your screen is not visible. I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we have to wrap up here because um, I've got yeah, another just, just five. Just yeah. Five to 10 so minutes. what what is the PR? Uh, it's this util async test consolidate the test cases. Test classes. You tell, let me just put uh, your name in here. Aha. Uh, uh, oh, right, great. Control okay. it. Oh, yay. Yeah. The, the error that you have discussed, right? Uh -huh. The score is that. Yes. Access and tempo. Nice. Okay, great, 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 great. Um, wonderful. And and how is this going for you? You know, what 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 did 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 we find any um, 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, it fails. It fails. It fails. On the CI, we can. All right. Hey, well, CI. at least it's failing, right? We're making progress because this is one that needs to get done. Um, yeah. Nice. Okay. So let's see. Um, so first of all, I merged the uh, that integral. I think what is that? The integration test, right? Okay. With, yep. I just I just forget the name. What was that? Yeah, the async test case and the async exit tag and the integration CLI test case. So you put yeah, all of those. Integration, integration CI, CI test and then async exit test, right? Mm -hmm. I merged these two and it works fine. Then when I merge this async exit with async test case, then the test case start failing. Uh -huh. Okay, and I think, yeah. did you go through and you look at ones that use override setup? Because I think that's going to be your main culprit here. Have you done that yeah, yet? Yeah. Yes, um, I, I have read about this, but uh, didn't come up with a solution. Okay, so I and, think, yeah. I mean, I yeah. think I think really what's going to happen here is, is you're going to end up with git grep setup. Um, uh, let's see, can we do dash p? Come on, do you only understand? I think the CI logs can help uh, what's going on. Okay, yeah, so also just check, so check this out though, because... So if you do dash p, if you do git grep dash p, it'll show you the function or the class that something's defined in, like basically whatever it's defined in, right? And so you'll notice that there's a lot of there's a lot of things that override setup, and you're going to need to make sure that anywhere setup was overridden, that it has a call to super dot setup in it now, right? So basically all of these places will need calls to super dot setup. Um, so this is the command here. Um, yeah, I think I have tried this solution, right? You try, you tried uh, it. In, yep, yep. In a, in one of the files, but it didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. Okay, let's see. Yeah, so, yeah. why did it not work? Showing that. Uh, Underscore stack. Okay, and which one was it that we tried this in? Which which test case? Oh, uh, I think test released. That's true. But yeah, but it's not on this uh, PR. Oh, it's not on this PR. Oh, okay, you do. Yes. Change it separately. Yeah. I just okay, so locally tested it. Locally, okay. So yeah. I would say that um, does not start with uh, what? Okay, um, tell tell package relative to. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. These guys are unhappy with this, huh? Oh yeah, they like being in that in that directory, don't they? Um, tell package relative to repo root parts. All right, so. Yeah, this might need a little bit of. So yeah, this is sort of. I mean, this is sort of part of the part of the thing here, right? So, test project. All of these guys, all of these ones that that are uh, that are unhappy here, with their teardowns. All of these are definitely ones where super dot setup was not called. So all of these will will be fixed by looking at this list here that with the git grep dash p setup. And because the teardown method exists, and there's probably some of them that, that, that aren't being caught either. But, but basically, we just need to make sure that this ends up with... So anything that looks like this should look like this, right? There should be a super dot setup await directly beneath it, right? And this one... This, okay. Um, why is that not async? Whatever. Um... I think that's okay. that's going to fix the the bulk of these issues, right? This all these ones, and and also the, we'll need to make sure that that it's everywhere. It's not just the ones that are failing here. You you really need to go through this list, um, because or else you're going to end up with this happening at a random time in the future when somebody, because there's there's. The reason these are happening is because no one's overridden teardown. If somebody overrides teardown, then this would stop happening. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the usage is correct, right? The usage is correct if if this is the pattern that we see, right? Um, this is unfortunately it's very annoying that that Python um, 
does not have better support for this, um, sort of under catching these types of things. And this this release stuff, we'll we'll look at this release stuff. Okay, yeah, that released it. Let's let's make sure that we do the super dot setup, and then we'll look at the release stuff. What is going on here? Bam, give from all service. Dev. Release. Okay, so relative package question release. Self package resolve. Okay, yeah, you know, I think, I think what's going on is that this self package. So I think that that this guy, this self dot package, needs to be. Um, we need to make this relative to repo root to start with here, um, because if if this test starts getting run in a, in a temporary directory, this is going to be something that's no longer this. The test case was written to assume that that you are in the root of the, the DFML directory, right? So we need to make sure that it's that that we need to make this change happen here. And I think then you'll end up with this working. Um, those test case passes. So basically the git grep dash p command, which I'll paste in there. Um, and then this change. So git diff and then this. And this should be largely what you're looking for here. I believe to get this working. So let me put this in here. All right. Um, I'll just make this a diff. All right, and then how does that end up with? Yeah, oh, sorry, the Tmux bars. Why is the Tmux bar there? Whatever. All right, and oh, ah, no, okay. All right, that's what you're looking for there. All right, so and then um, on this on this proposal, let's see. Okay, so let's see. We have a timeline. I'll just give you a brief review here since we're here. Um, and then we have to end. Okay. Um, and just just so you know, um, there is. So, have you seen the rubric? Patel, have you seen the the rubric? No, not now. Okay. I am reading this you provided stuff okay great so i would take a look at um i would say take a look at the rubric take a look at you know this page including the rubric and so any anywhere you see you know i think they they had 30 hours a week has been cut down to 17 hours a week i haven't updated that screenshot but this is essentially how the proposals are graded so this is an important thing to um, to know. So, okay. uh, for all GSOC proposals. Ah. Please make sure you've looked at the rubric. All right. Um, and then I'll put that in the chat. Oops. So and then okay. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna review this offline, um, and I'll get back to. You. Let's just say. Okay. So how is that Git pod working? Is the Git pod environment working? I know it's been a while since anybody's used that. No, I have then set up it locally. Okay, you set it up locally. Okay. All right. Um. Great. All right. Okay. Um, so yeah, just make sure make sure you've read the 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 rubric, and then you know make sure you've really flushed out anything you know any anything and everything, and, and really understand how this is going to work, right? Um, 
and and I would say you know writing. So we do have uh, an expectation that that people have contributed, right? Um, and and that's outlined in the rubric. So doing some more contributions is probably the best thing you can do for yourself to to get more familiar with the code base at this point, um, because that will also help you uh, inform your proposal. I would say. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Yeah, I have to run now, but we. This is great. Great work, everyone. And I'll I'll talk to you on Gitter. And uh, uh, yeah. Uh, that uh, I just pushed those changes to docs. Sh port. So okay, great. The CC CI is running. So great. Probably the only lint docs and LGT and Python will fail. So all right. Uh, lint docs would fail because of that. It was not there in the last checkout. And, uh, okay. And uh, we it's failing because of why? Because uh, you know we run that docs.sh thing, but uh -huh. I replaced it with the dffml docs command. Okay. But when you check out to the older release, it was not there. And when you check out the older release, it's not there. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Um, that, that's interesting. That okay. Uh, why don't you just why don't you why don't you put an put an or on there? So so docs.sh or or you know how to do an or in Bash. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. So why don't you just throw an OR on there so that it still works? Um, and and so oh, you run fine. you run docs.sh, and if that doesn't you know if that throws an error, you run you run the the, the other. All right, great, cool. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Uh, hey, John. Yes. yes. Yeah, could you please uh, upload Thanks. the recording? Yes, I will upload the recording. All right. Thank Thanks. You.